the best advice for women in business. Get your fucking ass up and work. It seems like nobody wants to work these days. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brittany Simon. In today's video, I wanna talk about generational wealth. There's always like this discourse on the internet about rich people versus poor people versus that idea of investing in future generations. As you guys know, I have an immigrant background, not myself, but my parents from Iraq. They came to the United States as mostly children, 18, my dad was 18 and my mom was 12. And they had this idea, their parents did, that they would have better opportunity in America, but also they were escaping a pretty worn, torn country. There was an obvious need to move their kids to a better place. So when I think about the choices that they made, the places that they came from, and I think about where they ended up, successful immigrants with a successful business, a lot of the people in my family are super, super successful. I'm very proud of my family. I'm proud of my cousins. I'm proud of the people who really made a name for themselves after they came to the States or even being born here. They really continued that idea of, you know, my generation, my my cousin's generation is better off than our parents' generation, which is kind of the goal of immigrant parents. But there's a caveat. There's a thing that I keep mulling over. And it's the fact that my mom the other day said to me, like, Betsy, why are my kids not more successful? And I wondered what she meant by that. And I said, well, what do you mean by that? And she goes, well, I, you know, I figured you guys would be making more money by now, or you guys would all have houses by now, or you would be as successful as this cousin or this cousin. And I said to her, well, you know, mom, you kind of raised us as Americans. You didn't really raise us as kids of immigrants. You raised us like American kids. You told us we could be anything we wanted. You told us we could do our dreams. You told us that I could be a radio host or a YouTuber. You told me I could be anything I wanted. And of course, being human, we're gonna choose the path of least resistance. We're gonna choose the easiest path. So a lot of my siblings chose paths that were basically easy for them, things that came natural to them, yes, but also they never really desired to be mega rich. There's a lot of discussion in my house about being mega rich. We like to joke, oh yes, we're gonna be rich, I'm gonna be a millionaire, but none of us really care about money, which is kind of a sign that our parents raised us with an incredible sense of ethics and morals and duty and values. Like in some ways, the fact that their kids aren't mega successful in terms of monetary value is because a lot of us don't take money when opportunity comes up because it's usually within a context of betraying our values. I cannot tell you how many times on YouTube I've been given opportunities that would have made me more money, but it was just not a way that I felt comfortable with. I'd rather just be myself and make as much as I make, even if it's like equivalent to minimum wage, I would be pretty happy. I don't know what it is, but once I hit 30, I realized I've been sold a lie. To be specific, when you look up what ambition is defined as on Google, it says a strong desire to do or to achieve something, typically requiring determination and hard work. I'm not necessarily saying ambition is bad, but why are we taught that it's good to be ambitious? It's actually more accurate to say we're taught that it's bad to not be ambitious. You're taught that you're lazy or something if you don't have dreams or goals to achieve. I would argue that it is a form of laziness that keeps us from being ambitious, though I think in life you have to be at least a little ambitious to have even the basics. So I would say that laziness is either toxic or healthy and you have to choose what relationship you have with laziness. If I could make 50K a year for the rest of my life, I'd be pretty happy. I don't need a lot, but I understand that the world wants a lot. So they look at me and think, no, like you wouldn't turn down money, would you? Who would turn down money? People who were raised by my parents. None of their kids really choose money over opportunity to choose their values. Though we have made mistakes and maybe we've taken job opportunities that we thought were gonna go somewhere but didn't. Or maybe we were sloppy with how we made money. Or maybe we even we're bad employees, like we're not perfect. We suffer a lot from mental health. So maybe we haven't been perfect in that way but we never really took money that we thought was dirty. And I think a lot of people do. I think a lot of people, and that's your business, choose the Kim Kardashian route, which is fine because in this world where we're evolved animals over time, where we have no moral obligation to one another truly, that we only choose to have a moral obligation from our own sense of values, right? We're not obligated by the universe to be good to one another. So there is no reason for Kim Kardashian or her mother or any of those people to not capitalize on your hate, to not capitalize on selling you something you don't need. There's no reason for them not to capitalize on the opportunities of generational wealth for their children. Northwest is launching her own skincare line. It's a little bit weird considering she's like nine years old and I doubt she has a routine herself, but the trademarks have already been filed and her products will range from skin lotions to baby powders to even fragrances. Not to mention there's also a toy line coming. So when I see that their daughter, Kim Kardashian's daughter, 
is putting out a skincare line or I see that people on TikTok are like, why is a nine-year-old have a skincare line? Because she can. Because generational wealth means appealing to the masses and making you angry and getting you fueled and drama fuels money somehow. I don't understand it, but look at the opportunities Sneeko's made, Destiny has made, Melina's making right now. Look at the controversies even that Kyla is doing a humanizing series by interviewing who? controversial characters. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with uh, my humanizing series, I haven't done it in quite a few months. However, if you check on my page, there's a couple of the humanizing series. I've done it with Vosh, Sneeko, and Brianna Wu at this point. When I try to humanize people, I tend to try to pull from all sorts of controversial sides. I'm not interested in just not asking any difficult questions. It's not just a PR thing. Um, I typically try to pick, take fig take figures who have some level of controversy. At the end of the day, everyone has a set of values they stick by, but there is money to be made in controversy. And that's good. That's my side of the internet. I love that side of the internet. I love those people in general. I have nothing against that, but that is a choice you make versus I tend to choose the poor person's route, which is something that I have no problem with, obviously. And I know a lot of people wonder why I do that. But the truth is, is because I don't want the drama. Like I want some drama. I want to watch the drama. I just don't really want to be a part of it because when I am a part of it, it gives me an insane sense of anxiety. And I don't like that. I remember just months and months and months ago, I remember that Sneeko kept calling me and he'd be like, Brittany, get online, collab with me. And I like Sneeko so much. And I'm glad that he feels and wanted to give me opportunities to collab with him. I love that he felt like I would be a fun person to collab with. I really love that about Sneeko, but I never took those opportunities in mass because I just chose my family at the time over it or I chose sleeping in over it. Like he would literally call me. I'd be making my coffee. I'm like, what? And he's like, come collab with me. Get on the internet. And I'd be like, bro, I'm making coffee. I'm just waking up. I'm going to go hang out with my family. And the truth is, is like, that is a choice I made. Now, I think a lot of people are upset with people like Sneeko for being successful and Kim Kardashian and Paris Hilton and all these people and Trisha Paytas because they're doing things you would never be able to do. They're doing things I would never be able to do. Not just the moral things because that's, you know, always questionable, but the time. Look at any workaholic dad or mom who isn't around for their children. Look at, at any partnership that ends up dissolving over time because no one was there when they needed them to be. I tell people, if you're gonna take this road, there's a huge sacrifice that people don't think about. You know, most people think, oh, I'm gonna start a company, two months later it's gonna be worth a billion dollars and I'm gonna make a fortune. That is actually not what happens to 99% of people. Eight out of 10 fail. They have to do it three times. They spend a decade before they get their hit or they work at one company for 15 years and they finally get an exit. It's more like that and the personal sacrifice is huge. There is no soccer game on Saturday. There's no Sunday dinner with the family. You're working because some guy in China or in India or some woman out there is kicking your ass because we're in a global competition now. And so I don't care what your business is, men, women, you have to understand that you're going into a, 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 a huge lifestyle change. And I tell people it's not for everybody. Don't do it if you don't have the stamina to get kicked around and driven into the ground and get up and do it again and beaten up by people that tell you, this is not kumbaya stuff, this is hardcore stuff. And I meet many entrepreneurs that are in tears saying, I can't go on, I haven't seen, you know, my, my significant other in two weeks. I knew a person in business who's, you know, they were a dink couple, double income, no kids, and their work schedules were complete opposites. He worked weekends, she worked during the week, and they never saw each other. And after a decade of marriage, there was a conversation about divorce because they were both choosing work over the relationship. So again, I, choose my relationships over my work, which is always a compromise you're gonna make with money. But because I just don't value money except as a means to get my salami and my bread and my butter, like I'm not that worried about it. I feel like I live a pretty decent life. I'm happy with where I am in life. I'm happy with how things are going, slow but steady. But they're not about money. Money can't be the focus of my life. So when we are upset at Sneeko and Kim Kardashian and all these people, 
remember that you're upset for what reason? Why are you even upset at people for living their best life? I think in some ways people are virtue signaling. They're upset that Kim Kardashian is famous because they think I would never do that. And I used to think that way too. I used to think like I would never do that. That's so unethical. But the truth is I wouldn't even do that because I'm not getting out of bed. I choose sleep over money. I don't worry when my calls go down. I don't worry when my Patreon goes down. I mean, it's kind of anxiety inducing, but I'm still making at least what I need to cover my bills. And that's what I care about. Am I doing right by my relationship and my obligation to that relationship financially. And if I am, anything extra is just a perk. And that's the point, is that if my goal was to have Bugattis and be top G and to do those things, I would have done it. The formula is there. Follow the Andrew Tate formula. It's a thing. You can follow the Kim Kardashian formula. Do you all remember when she was telling her story and how she ended up getting famous? Yes, a part of it is that her father was famous and that her mother had a very good eye for becoming famous. But more than that, Kim had to put in the work of being seen by the paparazzi, her and Paris Hilton. So you think, oh, Paris Hilton had the Hilton name, that's all she needed. No, you need to be relevant, which is so different. Being famous isn't enough. There are plenty of poor famous people. You have to be strategic. I definitely see the evolution of my fame. Everything has just evolved as time has gone on. And I think we've gotten to the point where like, we're here. Like it's past the point of, a quick 15 minutes. To remember, we, we grew up with the Heltons. She had known Paris her entire life. At that point, Paris was huge. Paris was everywhere. And very soon, so was Kim. She was best known as being Paris Hilton's sidekick. So Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian went out every night to get the paparazzi to notice them, to be in the headlines. It's why Destiny's doing really well with Sneeko right now. I'm the one advocating for it. <laughs> yeah, I'm not advocating for it. The You're not taking any stance at all. You're like, oh, well, I understand why, but I'm not pro or con. Because that is take a stance. Wait, 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 here we go, here we go. 20,000 men's brains, they're connected to you right now, Fresh, and you can transmit them one message. Do you tell them? Get a vasectomy or, back. Me or so, don't get a vasectomy. This is Work the answer. Them. This is the full, yeah, what are you full answer. Their minds are hooked in you right now. Get ready. They're about to call their <laughs> right general now. practitioners right now. Right now. Yeah. As a man, just say what you want. Do you oh, want kids? No, no, no. Listen, Bro, this is no, a ducking I'm answer. Them, because they're going after exactly the manosphere bubble they need to, to remain relevant in that particular bubble, to gain an audience who's like, yeah, fight for my side. The red pill guys are using destiny to remain relevant, to have a bad guy to fight. Yes, take down the progressives. It's a wonderful formula for fame or at least success in that bubble. Maybe not mega fame like Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian, but it, there's a formula to it that is really, really good when your goal is this goal right? So there's nothing wrong with that. But pay attention. Pay attention to like Abba and Preach and how Preach stays out of it and how Abba on occasion will do things, but eventually chooses not to involve himself in the drama. He has fun calling into Destiny's show and that's great. But you notice how Abba isn't going on um, valuetainment. Abba isn't trying to go on Fresh and Fit anymore. Abba chooses peace. He's a family focused kind of person. Yes, he likes money, but Abba's also very humble and that's great. For me, obviously that's a vibe, but for somebody else who's trying to get a Bugatti, the Abba way isn't the right way. That's the Fresh and Fit way. You want a Bugatti, you gotta choose Fresh and Fit. One of the other people that I wanna bring up is Doja Cat. And Doja is somebody that I wish I could be a fan of, but I haven't quite fallen in love with her. I love her image, I love her voice. There's something about her that is so alluring. She has a thing. When I see my photos next to Doja Cat photos, I'm like, okay, it's clear I don't have the thing, which is great. That is the thing that the masses need to make you sort of famous or the maybe it's the reverse. It's the thing you need to make the masses want to watch you. Kim Kardashian has it as well. I think a lot of her sisters say she's the famous sister for a reason. Something about Kim makes me want to watch. Well, Chloe and Courtney, it, uh, well, not so much, right? There's something less appealing about them. A few months back, Doja Cat had a little bit of a scandal, which I actually think was probably in preparation for her newest single, Attention, which she just released. It was mid, I didn't love it. But Doja has written many, many songs that have gotten her very famous. And she put out a tweet, which a lot of people thought was like a mental health crisis. But she was basically saying like, haha, jokes on you. I tricked you, my audience, into buying my music and making me famous and making me rich. But the the truth is, is like, that's what she's supposed to do. If you want to be a megastar, and you want the masses to love you, you do sort of have to write these regular songs or like not regular, that's the wrong word. You have to you have to write these 
amazing songs that make regular people want to listen to you because most of the world is regular or basic or um, normie. Most of the world isn't niche. So in order to be a pop singer, a popular singer, you have to make things that are popular, right? So Doja did that. There is something about Doja that just is so alluring. So maybe she was faking those tweets to get people ready for her new single. Maybe she was saying as an artist the truth and we just don't want to accept it. Or maybe we can accept it and be okay with it. What's wrong with Doja Cat making popular music that convinces people to give her money when we are entertained? Are we not supposed to be entertained by popular music stars? I think a lot of people were hating on her because they want this fantasy life where musical artists aren't quote unquote trying to sell you something. But obviously, they should be trying to sell you something. Otherwise, they wouldn't make money from doing music. And that's already a hard industry as it is to be successful in. Okay, so this is all this to say that it's not about deciding who's morally bad or wrong or who's choosing money over not, but there is a formula to life. If you want generational wealth, if you want your kids to be wealthy, you have to force a narrative down their throats and have them not choose their own identities in order to keep that generational wealth. You wanna be Trump, be Trump. You wanna be Kim Kardashian, be Kim Kardashian. But you can't have both. You can't be a family person who loves their family and is always there and be a billionaire. That just doesn't happen. And if you can give me a story of somebody who did that, let me know. Maybe JK Rowling, but still look at JK Rowling's relationship with social media, with her audience, with her haters. I wouldn't say it's the most healthy. I would rather have a minimum wage job for the rest of my life than be in a position where I'm constantly compromised with my mental health because I can't stop fighting my haters, even in my sleep. I don't want to be her. I don't want to be JK Rowling. I don't want to be these people who are constantly consumed by their enemies. Like in order to what? Build a name for yourself, have a legacy. None of that means anything to me. When I believe we're all evolved animals on a planet and we're all just gonna die anyways, I couldn't even imagine that being a priority. But I think what we need to change is this narrative in our heads that these people are bad because they're seeking some sort of consistency by, for by following the formula. I think that is the mistake. And that is also what makes us ugly internally is hating on these people when the reality is that they're just doing something that you and I refuse to do. It might be for different reasons, but I think a big part of it is also laziness. I think there is a part of us that chooses laziness over going out every night to get the paparazzi's attention, being Logan Paul, being, you know, these sensational controversial characters in order to get people to pay attention to us. Yeah, there's a part of it that's just laziness, that we're too lazy to be Kim Kardashian. And I think that's why Kim Kardashian says like, no one wants to work. The truth is, Nobody wants to work at her level, which is true. Most of us don't want to do that. I don't want to do that. Do you want to do that? I don't want to do it. And you can say Kim Kardashian doesn't work, but let's be honest. You just don't want to admit that she is working at a level that you and I can't keep up with. I'm sorry. I don't, I can't keep up with Kim Kardashian. And I don't think I have to pretend otherwise because honestly, I already found my joy and happiness. My joy is not in the hustle or grind. It's in making sure I have enough food on my table, making sure I have enough time with my family. That's all I want out of life. Making sure my bills are paid and I can spend time with my family. And as long as I prioritize that, I'll never be jealous of Kim Kardashian. I'll never want her mega millions. I'll never be upset with Andrew Tate. I'll never be upset with these people existing because they're just playing a different game. So ask yourself, what game am I playing? And if it's the generational wealth game, get ready to force your kids into a lifestyle they didn't ask for and get ready to push a narrative into the media so the eyes are always on you. Because I don't know about you, but I'm not interested. So that's one way of maintaining gener generational wealth. There are other ways, less famous people ways, but again, that means playing a game where you can't be lazy. You can't spend your weekends playing D&D. &D. You can't play video games. You can't spend your weekends partying unless the cameras are on you and paparazzi's paying attention to you. You can't spend your time complaining on Twitter. You have to build an actual career, which is based off of sensationalism and controversy. All right, girls, that's it for today. I think I'm gonna go ahead and go. Thank you for watching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out
for the truth and living life as a fool.